3.30. It feels like... It feels a bit later than that, even though it's not. It's fine. It's early starts and you just take it a little bit slower. Strange game. I had to set my alarm to get up and come to, to the game. Yeah, the feeling. Anyhow. How many boxes did it tick for you, Ken? Oh, ultimately, it ticked all all the things that we needed to. We needed to, you know, finish off a strong uh, home and away season, which we, you know, we played really well over the course of. I think it'd be a bit more course of the season than just today, because today was a pretty frustrating and challenging day on pure skill, I, th I would imagine. But the reality was to come away with a five-goal win uh, when things weren't going well was again another good sign for us that throughout this year we've matured to a point where we. We, we can turn in some, um, not our best performances, into still strong wins. And that's why we've qualified third, or equal second, pretty much. We've, you know, we've qualified in a really high position at the start of the year that um, we had great confidence. Not everyone else shared the confidence, which is good. Was it a challenge? Talk, talk to us about the challenge of a player wanting to think two weeks ahead rather than think about this game. Would you yeah, no, I, think that's, I think that's reasonable to accept that, that, that they would spend some time thinking, I mean, and a um, little bit of dreaming for them because they, they just that's what they set out to at the start of the year. When we started training in November, we started training to play finals, you know, and we've done a lot of miles to get to that point. You know, we we're going to one of eight teams to qualify. So we, it's, it's a moment that they need, they, they need to reflect on. And then it's, at some stage before the game, during the game and even after the game, I'm sure they'll, they'll acknowledge that um, that was the regular season done. Really excited about the, the new season, and for us, you know, we we want to make sure we have a great, great September. So, what shifts now, Ken? How does the mindset shift substantially now from home and away to, to finals? Oh, well, the stakes go up. That's clear. I mean, it's hard to imagine the stakes going up for me from round four this year, but the stakes go up, um, and for the team, the stakes they they do, but the. You know, mistakes will also happen in finals like today's game, which is really pleasing. You'll, you'll get through a game that it will be like that. And I don't always think finals gives you the best football. It gives you the toughest football and the, the most resilient team gets through most of the time. Just following on from that, I mean, your close record in close games and, and tough games this year, you must, must approach that combative final style football with a fair bit of confidence then. Yeah, I think all teams who qualify probably have, had, have their, had their share of close wins throughout the season. And I think that's why you actually eventually do get there and you know when you finish up the top you're probably winning more of those close ones than losing and I think uh, you know we've put ourselves in a good position by being able to win those close ones. Can you talk about belief if you've worked against a common theme that people didn't believe you were a top four side this year does that work for you in September? No. Nah. Generate something within the group to say no, no, we've proven we've, it once this year, prove it again now. No, I think we've been really um, strong on who we are and what we do, and I think we haven't we haven't let anything outside of that influence because it's really hard sometimes not to get influenced. But the reality is, we that was the thing we talked about today with the boys is what what's our game style look like and what it is, and they know exactly what that looks like and and they know how to play it. That do they execute it 100 percent of the time perfect? No, they won't. No, they don't. No, they won't. And neither will any team playing in the in the last month. Does the you, week? Does I guess the week off? Does that come at a good time for you in any way? Or? Of course, yeah. We'll all say yes now because we got it. I said this every time I've been a part of it. The, you know, you get the week off. It, it's a great time to refresh and, and recharge for your players, for your coaches, for everyone involved. But then also, the, I think the um, the nervousness, the anxiety part starts to build pretty quick that you're, you're coming into a big part of the season. But we look forward to that. I'm not frightened. I mean, it's it's a bit scary playing finals, but you earned the right and. You've just got to embrace the opportunities and we've, you know, three out of four years we've found ourselves here. We're not just a, we, we just didn't happen to do it this year. That's that's my key point. We've got a lot of experience. Does that allow, I guess, guys like Charlie and Trent, you know, that, that extra guys, crucial week to get back? I mean, because you know, Charlie's still wearing some self-protective boot, it seems, then you have to tell that looking ahead. Yeah, no, we gives everyone a chance to be available and even, you know, the players you talked around and then, you know, Todd missed today and he'll be certainly available and we got Scooter back playing football yesterday, which is a great result for us. So, you know, we're going to be in a pretty healthy position come the first week of the finals, but I think, you know, most teams, bar your long-term injuries, which we've all got some long-term term injuries like Georgiatis and things like that, but we're going to be pretty healthy. How did Scooter fare coming in the Sanford? Sorry? How did Scooter fare in the San Francisco yesterday to come back home? Look, I don't think he was best on ground, but he got through. And I think that's the important part for us is to get some minutes into him and build his build him up now. And he's really important to us. Really, really important to us. And you know, you've seen not that long back when he came in and played four or five weeks of great Ruckman footy. You know, 
Sam and Dante have been holding up for us pretty well, and if Scooter's not right, we'll be, we'll be OK. But the reality is we'd like to see Scooter train well over the next couple of weeks. Ken, is there anything from those previous two final series, 20 and 21, that you hold on to and say is still going to be valuable for you this time around? Is Experience it? is valuable. Good or bad, it's valuable. And there's no doubt about that because you've, you've lived through some good stuff, you've lived through some disappointing stuff, and the reality is it's all valuable, but it won't, it won't make that big a difference when the game's on. But, you know, you can draw on experience, I think, at some point, and it can keep you calm when you need to, and I think that will probably be the main thing we'll get from it is we've been there before and we've played. It's a different challenge. We're going to play away in the first, first week of the final, the last couple of, years, last couple of times we've played, we've played at home. So, so what do you draw from experiences at the Gabba against Brisbane? What still relevant there for you? Oh, no, we've only played them once. It's a long time ago, round one. Played them once this year, so um, yeah, yeah. it's going to be, uh, you know, round one doesn't count for much, but I think we um, I think we match up well against them. They match up well against them. I mean, we finished second and third. It's probably going to be a pretty good game. And it'll be, um, you know, a great opportunity for us to... To, to win a final, and that's all we that's all we set out to do at the start of the year: qualify and then win some. Ken, was your heart in your mouth when Zach went to his knees in late in that third quarter? Did you just have that. Oh, I. We just used to talk with him. Yeah, because some heart goes in my mouth when he goes out in the ground. Yeah. That's just the way he plays. I mean, he's he's not reckless, but he's too brave for his own good sometimes, and that's just what he does. Um, that's just the way he plays, and yeah, it does every every time. Whether it's any one of my players, though, to be honest, I mean, I get why the values on Zach. He's played another outstanding game today. He's had an outstanding season along with you know the whole team really. But Zach's certainly been put up there as the poster boy a little bit. You know, he's had a great season. Brownlow medal possibly coming his way. Oh, again, who knows? I mean, who knows what happens in those things? But he's he's earned the right to be considered. I'd, I'd imagine that. That no doubt about that. No one you know no one's played 23 perfect games, but Zach's had a pretty strong 16 or 17. I'd have thought. Has Ollie Lord given you something to think about on the eve of finals? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, he's played the role. I mean, Charlie's... I think Charlie's missed 10 or 11, maybe 12 games. And Ollie's played basically all them for us. We, we're really comfortable with Ollie's progression. We think he can have a, a real impact. And, you know, that might be that him, him, Charlie, Todd, Jeremy, and I, maybe they can all play together. I don't know. We haven't got to that point yet, but, you know, for different matchups. But Ollie's done really well. It's a really, really encouraging part of our program. Like our Magpies, as a very young team, have qualified to play finals. Our, you know, our AFL team's qualified to play finals, but that's off the growth of our individual, of some individuals. But our team, but more importantly, some of those young players have been really good for us. Which is stronger at the moment, Ken, the group or the game plan to get through a final? Because everyone's going to compare what you've done in 2021 and say there's still a question mark. Can Paul get right. through the final hurdle? Yeah, I, I can't. An I mean, I really can't answer that. We can only play, and that's all we can do is do our do our best to win. And um, over history, and that's all I can reflect on. Over history, a lot of teams continually have to turn up before they eventually break through. Um, we keep turning up at the moment, bar one year in the last four. You know, hopefully we get a chance to break through. What happens in the next week? Can you keep it as normal, or do you give players a bit of a? No, we'll, we'll we'll rest them for a few days and look after them for a few days. But we've also got the sample playing, so there's a there's a bit of a split in in the way we'll go about that. But we'll certainly um, we won't miss on training well. Uh, the reality is, we'll, but we'll give two or three days off for our players to freshen up the play today, and the sample boys will uh, will get back to work. All right, thanks, Ken. Cheers.